What's up guys, Damien Keys here. Welcome back to the channel. So if you haven't heard, Joe Rogan has just signed an exclusive deal to Spotify for what is estimated to be around a hundred million dollars. which will take all of his content pretty much exclusively away from Apple, away from YouTube and any other platform apart from the odd clips which will promote Spotify in order for everything to be on Spotify. And Spotify are building a video arm to their platform in order to ensure that there is now video to go alongside the audio specifically for Mr. Joe Rogan. Now, if you haven't heard, Spotify have been investing heavily into the podcast landscape and have spent upwards of over three quarters of a billion dollars. That's right, billion with a B. After buying Anchor and and Parcast and Gimlet and also into the huge sporting podcast, The Ringer. Three quarters of a billion dollars. And now they have Joe Rogan, the shining light of all podcasts, which was YouTube's crown jewels. So some stats in case you weren't aware on Spotify. Spoken word or podcasts equate to 25% of what people listen to on Spotify already. And that doesn't take into consideration when people like Joe Rogan make exclusive deals. Joe Rogan gets around 190 million downloads of his podcast. And on top of that has 3 billion views on YouTube, which equates to around about $6 million a year. Now let's put that into perspective because Spotify have given him $100 million, not for the year, but for the rights over the next, we don't know, two, three, four years. But putting that into perspective, that works out at roughly 28 billion streams. 28 billion streams. Now that puts him at the top of Spotify's all time list because Drake, who is the most played artist on the entirety of Spotify, has only had around about 26 billion streams. So this puts him already, before he even joined Spotify, as the most important, the biggest Spotifyer of all time. And part of the deal is Joe Rogan's podcast has been taken away from YouTube. It's been taken away from Amazon. And what does that mean? It means they're pissed. So how is this breaking the music industry? Well, let's start with the streaming war. There's been a streaming and content war for quite some time. If you look at Netflix versus Amazon, then all of a sudden Disney joined the fray and everyone is competing. And the big word is all about exclusivity. It's exclusives. Who can we get or what can we make that is exclusive to our platform? But the issue is, is up until this point, all of these wars have pretty much been video based. They've been visual based, but this has just opened the door to audio, which hasn't been done before. This has just made audio part of that war. You see, the music industry is an ecosystem which is governed by three major labels. There used to be many major labels and over time they've all kind of eaten each other up and now they are down to three major labels. Now whilst artists like you get stiffed when it comes to how much money you get per streams, the labels don't. The labels take a nice big share from Spotify, around about 52%. So they're sitting pretty. In fact, the labels are making a massive chunk of money. And Spotify is one of the distributors, but doesn't own any rights to the music. But in 2018, there was a sticky situation when Spotify decided it was gonna start getting closer to the artists. The Spotify direct distribution says, we're gonna allow artists to upload straight through to us. And on top of that, we are going to be able to push the artists we like. We get to say who is gonna be massive because we have so much control and we are going to start working with these artists as direct distributors. And the, and the labels started to worry because they knew whilst they had the power, they couldn't shift too much power to Spotify because all of a sudden that governing, those gatekeepers would start to lose their grip. Now at the time, there was a little bit of a power struggle, there were some shots fired, but Spotify weren't big enough to pull that off. So everything resumed and went back to normal. But 
Fast forward to a few days ago when Joe Rogan just signed his podcast to what is the biggest music distribution service. The labels are already worried about Spotify and they're already pissed off that 25% of listeners are going there to listen to podcasts before Joe Rogan and whoever else signs up to Spotify. Now think about it, a song, three, maybe four minutes average, Joe Rogan's podcast, three hours long. Three hours, 190 million people downloading or listening to a three hour podcast. How many songs are going to be in that three hour podcast? Probably about 50 songs. 190 million listening to what potentially could be millions and millions of songs. So if that 25% of podcasts start to become 30 or 35%, the labels have reason to get worried. And let's face it, Spotify just went up overnight. They just made five billion dollars on their bottom line overnight. They went from 30 billion valuation to 35 billion valuation. And all they did was invest 100 million. That's some pretty good return of investment. Meanwhile, they have started the avalanche because there is now a land grab. Joe Rogan gets signed exclusively to Spotify. So what does that mean? YouTube are panicking. YouTube know they've just lost a huge player that people are going specifically to YouTube to watch. Also, Apple have, have lost their 190 million downloads. So everyone is losing eyes on the prize. So they have to start fighting back. A punch has been thrown. Another punch has to come from somewhere else. And we're talking about YouTube and we're talking about Apple. But what about Deezer? What about Pandora? What about all of the other platforms who are also fighting? There needs to be shots fired back. Now, I don't know if you noticed this, but a couple of weeks back, PewDiePie got signed to YouTube on an exclusive deal to return to do live streams. And it wasn't that long ago before we were talking about Ninja, who went from Twitch to Microsoft for a reported 20 to $30 million. Exclusivity is the key, and we are about to see a land grab for content creators. So who's next? For example, what about Logan Paul with his impulsive podcast? Try saying that five times, very, very difficult. But what happens if he's waiting for that phone call? Are YouTube gonna make him exclusive or will he get a phone call from Spotify saying it's time for you to come across and we'll give you 20 million or 30 million? All of a sudden, everyone's waiting for that phone call. Things need to be put in place and signed with an exclusive agreement because if not, they are free to go to anyone else on that exclusive agreement. And with all of this power that Spotify could be getting, they could potentially own the podcast sphere. They could say, this is ours. We now own this. If you want podcasts, you will come to Spotify because we have made that land grab. And in doing so, they could then advertise within that. So not only are they gonna monetize by getting more people across and more subscribers, but also on top of that, if you've got a one or two or three hour podcast with adverts every 15 minutes, you've also just added to the monetization. Now Spotify have been losing money pretty much since its inception. However, this is the chance for Daniel Ek and Spotify to say no. From here on in, we are going after some big high-end money, so we are gonna be more valuable and make some big profits which then puts the record labels in a really awkward space because Spotify become more powerful. They become the Facebook and they start buying up everyone else. And at which point the labels have a huge rival in Spotify. And Spotify are aware of this. They have known for a long time that they are underneath the labels. They have no power when it comes to the labels pulling out at any time, but it's getting to the point where you've got a partnership by default, which basically means one of them can't exist without the other one, without a huge war going on. And as Spotify becomes more of a Netflix, more of a gatekeeper, if it does piss off the labels and the labels get cold feet and start to pull out, who's to say that Spotify say, well, do you know what? We've got some money now. Now we're the big players. And now, instead of going after podcasters, we can do something that we've never been allowed to do before. We can go after artists. So what if Spotify said, fine, I'm taking Ed Sheeran off you and I'm gonna pay Ed Sheeran 100 million 
or 200 million or 300 million because we've seen this in professional sport. If Joe Rogan can be signed for 100 million, then it's only a matter of time, two, three, four, five, six, seven years before we will get the first billion dollar artist. We will get a billion dollar artist who signs the rights to their music or their property for $1 billion. Now, what if that's Drake? What happens if it's Ed Sheeran? What happens if it's Adele who says, yeah, I'll make three albums exclusively exclusively for you for 200 million, for 300 million, at which point we have an, a whole new uh, music industry because there won't be any labels. There will just be Spotify, Deezer, Pandora, and the labels will probably be underneath. The shift will go from Spotify underneath the labels, potentially whoosh, to Spotify owning the labels. Can you imagine if that could happen? Now, what does this mean for you, the artist? Well, this is what it means. Joe Rogan just bought the house next door. So therefore, the neighborhood is going up. You live in a street, Joe Rogan buys next door, all of a sudden, your house is double in value or triple in value. Content creation and content creators just got a massive shot in the arm. He just showed that content creation is worth more today than it was last week. And yes, I know we're talking about Joe Rogan or Logan Paul or Howard Stern, but this filters down. When this happens with the big guys, it starts to filters down. So what this means is there's still a land grab everywhere. This is the time that we have to get our house in order, understand and learn what's going on, and more importantly, be in control of the content we are making and also have direct access to our audience and our fan base. We have to work harder on the one-to-one -one communication. We have to make the content, but we have to make sure we're providing as much value. Stop this push marketing. We have to make sure that we build our army. In order to succeed, we've got to build our momentum. We've got to build our content. We've got to build our army, but we also have to keep our eyes open because the way this works is as everything shifts, and the industry starts to evolve, what we've got to do is we've got to be at the front. The musicians at the front are always the ones who win. So we have to navigate the industry. We have to keep our eyes open and we have to learn. If that tiger is coming for a bunch of us, all I have to do is outrun everybody else and I won't get eaten. And that's the way this works. Our job is to make sure that we are ready and able to run fast so that we win in the long term. So guys, I wanna know your thoughts. I wanna know how you think this is going to affect the music industry because I have plenty of ideas going on in my head. One of those things is I think this potentially could be the death of radio. I just don't see how radio can survive because Howard Stern signed to Sirius XM uh, for an exclusive deal, but most radios were struggling 10 years ago when I was on radio. So how are they gonna possibly manage now to get the advertising in when we can hook our phones straight up into the car, listen not just to music, to podcasts? I just can't see how radios can survive this one, but I might be completely wrong, and I wanna know your thoughts. What does this mean for the music industry? Because something's about to break. And if something breaks, it means there's a shift in the entire ecosystem. And I wanna know what you think is gonna happen. So guys, thank you so much for watching. If you've liked this, if you can do me a favor, if you can smash that little like button and turn it blue, it means the world to me and it really helps that algorithm. But also, if you don't subscribe, and I know 65% of all you watching don't subscribe, almost on 100K and I want my little plaque. So if you can do me a favor, hit that subscribe button, but more importantly, just kind of be a part of this community because we're doing this twice a week and I'm so proud to see what you guys are creating. But thanks for watching and I'll see you guys soon.